Okay. So now get ready. It's important to have a good start to a new unit. In previous years of uh, math, you learned how to solve for missing angles and sides of right angle triangles. But what about triangles that are not right angled? In order to solve triangles that are not right angled, those are called oblique. Oblique is what we call anything that isn't right. We need some new tools. The first new tool will be the sine law. Okay, that's the first one we're going to learn. And this explains um, what it actually is. But just think of sine law as a formula, and the sine law is shown below. So this is, in a nutshell, what the sine law states. Watch this. I'm going to use three different colors here. The sine law essentially states that if you were to take sine of angle D, like the sine of whatever this angle is, and you were to divide it by the side that's across from it. Like this is what I call a pair. Sine law is all about pairing things up. Okay. That is a pair. That would be exactly equal to, I'm going to grab a different color here, sine of angle E. So that's this one here. And side E is across here. See, they're, they're opposite to each other. And that would be exactly the same as sine of f. I'm going to use pink here. Sine of f, which and so f is in this corner right here. Okay. And this is the side that goes with it. Okay. So you've got you've got essentially one, two. And three pairs. Okay. Three pairs. I'll fix that. I think it. I let me do this first and see if it helps you. But again, this angle goes. That angle goes with that side across from it, and then the orange here, angle D, goes with side D. Okay, so like that. And then the angle E goes with side E. We've got three pairs. So what E's, the E's are here. The D's are here. And the F's are here. Don't fixate on the letters. Okay. I, I purposely did not use ABC because I'm, students think it's always ABC. Right? So it's D, F, X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter. So down here, you have side lengths. Right? And up here, you have sine of angles. Okay, that's important to make sure you don't mix them up. And I just keep it this way. I know it can be done. You can flip-flop. You can have all the sides at the top, all the sine of angles at the bottom. I'm just going to keep it like this. Okay? So for sine law, this is all you really need. Sine law works in the following scenarios. Three scenarios where it works guaranteed. You could have an angle there, you know what that is, a side here, and then another side there. That would work. The other scenario is, I'm just gonna give you like an angle there, a side length here and one other angle and this one is hidden right this one is hidden watch uh, so, uh, angle there the side in between and and the angle right next to it like that and this is what I want you to um, First and foremost, in every single one of these cases, you know three pieces of information, okay? But it's the pairs that I want you to focus on. 
you have you know the angle and the side across from it both of them are known you know it's sine law okay over here is there a pair you've got a pair right there you know it's sine law that way is there a pair here on the last one invisible for now because you would say side you need this angle right can you find this angle absolutely Calculate third angle using sum of triangles equal to 180. Okay, so this one kind of becomes a check mark after a little bit of work. And now we can highlight those two. That's your pair. So in every single one, I want you to write down pair. I'm going to go this way, pair. And pair again. This is the invisible pair. I know some of you have heard me say this before. This is the couple that haven't announced it yet. They're not holding hands, right? But you kind of know they're together, right? But anyways, these ones, right? For sure, there's a pair. So you can always use sign law. So remember that. If you have a side angle pair, use sine law down here. If you go down there, that's where you see that. And write down maybe on the last one, this is the hidden pair. Let's use this now and solve, do some solving here. Uh, also, one more thing before you uh, drift off here. You see how there's two equal signs there? This is equal to that, equal to that. We will never do that. We will only ever pick, we're going to pick uh, two expressions. That's it. We're not going to have all three like that. Okay? But this is true about any triangle. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, go to page five here. And I'll show you how to use it. Calculate the length of side A. Okay, so basically this is a question mark down here. That's what we want. You're going to look at this triangle. So down the road, I'm not going to tell you whether to use sine law or cosine law. But this one, you should, it should be a dead giveaway that that's a pair. And I will say actually it's a known pair. You gotta know the angle and the side across from it. That's when you know you can use the sign law. Okay. How much space do I see? Okay, yeah. So I know a pair. Therefore, the three dots mean therefore, use sign law. The province usually gives you one mark by just picking the right law to use, okay? So sine law, so this is how we start. I always start with my known pair, watch this. Sine of 52 degrees over the side length across from it, which is 16.8 centimeters in this case, is equal to and here you have to do a little bit of thinking. It's not quite always this straightforward. This example is straightforward. In order for you to solve for this side, which we don't know, so we're gonna put A instead of a side length, we're gonna put A down. You need to take the angle across from it. So 72 is the one you're gonna write down here. Because these two are across each other, Look up here real quick. These two are across each other, right? And so are these two. Right? That angle is across that. Why am I saying that? Because it could be that they would have, they gave you this angle here. This angle here does not help you to find that side. Only that angle does. 
it helps you to find the one across from it, okay? So once you have this here, what does this look like? Cross, multiply, and divide, right? It's just a little uglier. But again, you go to the side where the variable is, you start with this, you, you go multiply, then divide. But I want you to show me the work, okay? This is just to help you. This is not work, this is just to help you. So we're gonna go A is equal to, I go 16.8 first. I take this number, multiply it by sine of 72. And I use brackets here, but this is just multiplying. And then I will divide it by sine of 52 degrees. And I know this looks scary, but trust me, sine of 72 is just a number. So is sine of 52. They're just numbers. Okay? So you don't have to fear that. Grab your calculator now. And you're probably wondering, Mr. Erickson, why didn't you go sine of 72 times this? Like, why didn't you flip-flop? It doesn't matter. 2 times 3, 3 times 2 is the same thing. But I'm, I'm scared that the 16.2 will, will get messy here. It will multiply before taking sine. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go 16.8 times sine of 72. I hit equal at that point. Divide it by sine of 52 degrees. 20.28 is what you're supposed to get. Okay, so A is 20.281. We're in centimeters, right? We're, we're solving for a side length. Clearly indicate your answer. That is the, the answer we're after. Okay. Take it one step further. Calculate the length of side C down here, right? How would you do that? I will, I will tell you this, once you have a pair, use it again. So I will, I will start with my pair, sine of 52 over 16.8 is equal to. Sine of 72 will not help you because it will find A, right? What do I need here? Yeah, some of you are already calculating. I need sine of C in order to solve for side c i don't know what c is just yet i will figure that out so angle c is 180 minus 52 degrees minus 72 degrees so i subtract the both angles i know sorry a 56 we said yeah 56 which is important it's not my final answer but I'm, I'm now gonna use that to help me find side C. So sine of 52 over 16.8 centimeters. This is sine of 56 over side C. That's the one I, I wanna find. So maybe show that you've inserted that here. And so C is 16.8, right? I, I multiply these two here, divided by sine of 52. And I get 17.36. Uh, I made a mistake. According to my key, this is supposed to be different. Let's try that one more time. Is that right? 1767? Okay. Make sure you have your units if you want full marks. There we go. By the way, note, we solved the triangle. We know all sides. And all angles right now. You remember that? Solving a triangle means solve for all three sides, all three angles. I don't know if you remember that. So we actually did that, right? We did that right now. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to ask you to try on page six. Try those. Apply what you've learned. Um, let me just say something here before you start, because uh, otherwise it might get a little messy. Okay. So I'm going to go to six here with you. It says here, solve the following triangles. Solve the triangles. So all sides, all angles. So for this one, I'm asking you to find Z here, but I also want you to find side X, right? So don't forget about that. You're going to need to do some work for that, okay? Uh, so solve for all sides, all angles for all these examples. And that's it for today. If you, if you just work through this, and you get it done, no homework. If you don't get it done, the rest is homework. Okay? That's it, guys. Thank you. Uh, before I go over the test, can you just take a moment to just write down the... Uh, I, I put the answer key right here. I will scan the one where I... Where I actually worked it out. So, but this way you know what the answers are supposed to be. You can also just snap a, do a quick, take a picture of that. That's what you're supposed to get. Make sure you also show your work properly, okay? Because I'm kind of picky with that. So don't just like come up with a, a number out of nowhere. Like show me the steps along the way. 